And uh, we created this poster here to share with the football team and really to all of Stone Mountain, all the students here at Stone Mountain, just to show them the history that, of the players that came through here. And not only do we have quality players on this poster, but you also got quality men. These guys are productive in their communities right now. But when I came through school, we wanted to know who came before us, and we wanted to leave our mark and then leave it a legacy for the guys coming behind us. But you can see we have several NFL players on here. Uh, we got several college players. We got Clemson represented, Alabama, NC State, Florida State. I mean, several of the different colleges. But we just really wanted to show those guys uh, where they come from, what can be done, and then pass the torch on to them. See. So who's going to be next? Who else are we going to add on this poster here? This is that. just a fraction of the guys that's come through Stone Mountain. I know it's several guys missing. We'll try to get another poster together, but we wanted to present them with this right here. at the bottom. And it's, it's, we can make a bigger poster for you guys coming behind us. Thank you so much. Hey, let's walk around and, and tell me about some of the things about this school that you attended. Yeah. When it had no windows. No windows. What that's, you think about that? Yeah, see, the windows. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got it good. I'm looking at the windows. We didn't have none of that. But uh, yeah, this is the track. This is you know where we cut our teeth. I'm mm -hmm. gonna tell you one of the traditions that we had when I was coming through here is when we walk down these steps right here. Uh huh. When you hit that track, your feet had to be running to the field. I mean that's just what it was. When I came up here, I came in the spring of '93. I was over at Stone Mountain Two. They called it Stone Mountain Two then. And I came up and I just wanted to come and get in shape. Mm -hmm. to get ready to go back to uh, middle school that following year. But when I came down and I started walking, the upperclassmen, they told me right then and there that that's not what we do as pirates. We run onto the field. So, you know, when we hit that bottom step, you had to run all the way out there to your stretch line. So wow. these trees right here, they wasn't here. You know, part of the things that we did at the end of practice is we ran these hills. You can still see the trench in there from where we ran it. Well, we came up this side, touched the fence, and then run back down that side. And then we came up this side, and we have offense on one side, defense on the other, and we competed to see who can finish first. And these steps right here, you know, I used to come out an hour early and do my step routine before practice and after practice, always trying to get that edge. So, I mean, but walking down here, it just brings memories. When I came out of my car, I hit that bottom step and I actually ran just from being ingrained that tradition, mm. just running out here, just that's what we do as pirates. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, so tell me, um, to what level did you continue after high school? Uh, coming out of high school, I'm gonna wait because I gotta run once I hit that. I bottom. got you. I got yeah, you. But, uh, coming you out see of that? high school, yeah, it's real. He it's said, real. "This bottom yeah, step, yeah. you gotta run." <laughs> you gotta to... run. So if you gotta tie something up, you stop right here and you tie your shoe. Wow. But you don't step right there. You run out there. So. Mm. But, uh, coming out of high school, uh, I went to Clemson. I started as a true freshman. I ended up being an All-American out of Clemson. I got drafted by the San Diego Chargers. I went out to the Chargers. I got drafted with LaDainian Thomason, Drew Brees. Wow. Uh, Junior Seau was my teammate. Got a chance to play against some of the Hall of Famers, the greats of the game, Jerry Rice, uh, Terrell Owens, Marshall Falk, uh, some of the great teams, uh, Tom Brady. Uh, played out in San Diego. I ended up tearing my knee up. And I went back to school, so I went back to Clemson and got my degree. That was real important to me going out. But I ended up being an All-American coming out of Clemson and still got some records, you know, up there that I hold. But uh, home is here, Stone Mountain, the Pirates. This is where I cut my teeth at coming out. I was the water boy. I used to go to Hambrick Elementary across over there, and my dad worked over here at security. Mm. And I would come after school and watch some of the greats that's on this poster here, you know, Chad Parsons. Uh, you know, uh, I would watch Big Chad and some of these other guys, Cannon Parkman, and watch those guys. And they and, and I was the water boy and the tea boy on Fridays. Well, I would run out there and get the tea at kickoff, waiting my turn to get up under the lights to put that red and white. Now it was black, putting the black on. But uh, it means a lot to me, and I keep up with you guys. I live in South Carolina now. I keep up with you guys on Max Prep. Um, and all the time I see what the Pirates are doing. So I'm glad I know we got new coaches, and I'm glad to see what they're doing, getting that tradition back. 
Um, and really, I'm, I'm supporting you guys, whatever you guys need. So Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, no man. Problem. No hey, problem. Hey, I got shoes on, but we can take yeah. this bottom step and go ahead and <laughs> yeah, run on over there. We got to run to Let, the track. Let's I'm get old enough. Let's go. Yeah, Come that's on. It, that's <laughs> it. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's it. That's Keep it. that tradition that alive. Y'all hear that, fellas? This is how it's done. This is the way it is done. Mm -hmm. something about track too so what did you do out here for track um i actually threw the shot threw the disc i went to state in the shot put went to state in the discus i ran the 400 meters wow. ran the four by one four by four i was second leg on the four by one uh, we had matt bailey who was our anchor he was on there carlos hamilton uh he was on there travis veal these are guys that's not on the poster mm -hmm. but they were out here with us and so uh you know, this field means a lot. I used to come out here by myself a lot. And with those guys that I just mentioned, Matt Bailey, Gary Burge, Tavis Sanders, we came out here and really worked hard to keep that tradition going. So, wow. That's yeah. good stuff, man. And then you see with the splice, they gave us new yeah. material out here. Yeah, Look at the nice. track itself, the yeah, fences the yep. and everything. Yep. The track, the hurdles. Mm -hmm. Yep. Matter of fact, that's that running backs. Uh, gauntlet that we used to run through and uh one of the things we try to do is run through it with no pads on and that to prove how tough you was because i watched these guys run through it the older guys mm -hmm. and uh you know just being able to run through and be you know come and see that right there that means a lot to me wow mm -hmm. yeah yeah this is nice baseball looks nice mm -hmm. uh, softball at the baseball field over there, got the big new scoreboard. Mm -hmm. See, all this stuff wasn't here when I was here, you know. But it's nice to come back and see the school still doing well, you know, and to see that. So I just, you know, just come back and have flashbacks of spring ball out here warming up and having the whole school out here watching us do spring football. So, wow. you know, and watching all the recruiters. You know, it was a who's who out here. We had schools, Notre Dame, Florida State, Tennessee, Nebraska, Southern Cal, Michigan, Florida, Florida State, you name it, they were out here to watch the Pirates practice and they were pulling from here. Mm. You know, we had guys go to Ohio State. I mean, several schools across the country. So that's that's the tradition that you guys come from and I know that you can reach that. You know, we always talked about having that hard hat like a pirate, you know, and so we just, you know, making sure we took care of business, not only on the field, but in the classroom as well. You know, we got to keep each other and hold each other accountable because we brothers walking through the building. Mm -hmm. We see one of our brothers not doing what they're supposed to do. We didn't wait for coach. We didn't wait for a teacher. We didn't wait for administration. We stepped up and took care of business ourselves. And we had a rule. You had to sit in that front row in class. And I'm in grad school right now, and I still fight to get that front row seat. And I'm going to be starting my doctorate in the fall. I'm still going to fight to get that front row seat because I'll be scared Coach McNeil or Coach Flig will come by <laughs> and tap me on my shoulder and I have to run because of that. But that held me accountable and those are traits. A lot of the things that I learned out here is what I'm using in my personal life as a father, as a husband, as a, uh, as a teacher, future administrator, uh, as, a, as a male. These are traits that I learned out here on this football field and sharpened and, and people held me accountable and I embrace that. And I, I look for that. You know, I like being held accountable now because of football. Mm. So, you know, in sports. So, yeah, but this, is, this, this means a lot out here. But, hey, bringing this poster home, I know these guys can do it. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing these Pirates mm. and what they're going to do in the future. Not just on the football field, but whatever endeavor they choose to go to. Because you Pirates for life. That's right. Thank you so no much. Problem, Thank no you. That, and, and I got it still on video. Yep, this, uh, this room right here, C-111, this is where Coach Fleet came and gave me my first college letters from the University of Notre Dame. Back then, Notre Dame was big, big time. You know, I know they're, they're pretty good now, but 
academically and athletically, Notre Dame was at the top. And so when Coach Fleet came, interrupted class, said, can I see Mr. Robert Carr as well? And I walked down, he had that letter from Notre Dame, all I saw was that gold helmet on there. Wow. And he brought me out here, gave me a great big hug, but that's some of the things that kind of catapulted me to go and continue to work and fight hard. Even when I got to college and times got tough, I remembered some of the stuff and some of the seeds that people sowed into me here at Stone Mountain to continue to fight and work hard for you guys to go next and what you're gonna do next. So I'm looking forward to see what you're gonna do next. Yeah, I just remember growing up, you know, I was a student over at Hamburg Elementary. Like I said, my dad worked over here. Um, and I remember at homecoming time, it was a big tradition where we went to downtown Stone Mountain. They had the floats. Uh, the players was on the floats throwing candy off and we couldn't wait till it was our turn to be able to do that. You couldn't have brought the Atlanta Falcons down there. We would have moved the Falcons out of the way because it was that big of a deal where we wanted to see the Pirates come through, the band walking through, and it was a big carnival-like atmosphere as we celebrated a homecoming. And I couldn't wait till my senior year, my junior year, to be able to get on that float and throw that stuff off. So I'm glad to hear that y'all bringing that tradition back homecoming right here. This is this is big. I wish y'all have brought my jersey up here. Just <laughs> got my old high school jersey. So yeah, yeah, that's big time. Hey, this will be the first of many opportunities, man. We're just okay. glad to see you home. Yeah, I'm glad to be home. Like man. I say, this, 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 this is my, I had some classes over here. Too. Yep, this is the English hall here. Yep, okay, yep. Right over here. You see this picture of the wall, that's a class of 2021, the juniors. Okay. This is their wall of fame for, it's been up since homecoming now. Wow. Yeah, that's the new coach right there. Okay. Coach Lyle, one of the players. Yeah, I see that number six right there. That, that's what jump out. That was my number. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say you was the originator the of that six? Originator number six. <laughs> I think after me, uh, um, we had a bunch of number sixes come through here. So, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Good I think stuff. Rashad Muhammad wore that number. Marcus Alikwe wore that number. Okay. Um, we had another guy who went to Ohio State wore that number. We had that six brain. I'm, I'm telling you, you, you go look through the books. That number six did some stuff. So. All right. Yeah. You know what that means. Yeah. You got to step gotta go up now. That step up. That's, That's it. it. Yeah, this is my English. Another memory, you know, walking into the gym, is all the magical pep rallies that we had in here, turning around. I'm gonna tell you a secret. I, I used to always stand and read the school song, mm -hmm. but everybody, we had to sing the school song at the end of the pep rally. But also, we had our powder puff, and class of '97 mm -hmm. was the first class as juniors to beat the seniors in the powder puff game. But we actually switched roles, so the guys would come out here and do the cheers, mm -hmm. and the girls came out and they had the black lines under their eyes. And it was <laughs> me, Carlos Hamilton, and uh, M.J. Stanley. We were come, we were the coaches, so we and uh, we went down and we beat them on a the last second play that was still controversial. <laughs> uh, we had one of the girls that ran track, Shay, and she's on there too. Shay took a sweep and took it like 90 yards to the house. And Coach Fleet called a, flood, a holding penalty, and that's how we won the game. And so, but uh, Coach LeBerry, you can see all of the championship banners. He wouldn't let the basketball team play with us. But if they would have played, we would have definitely, you know, it wouldn't have been close. So, uh, but my coaching record here is 2-0, because we won as seniors too. And just looking up there at the mezzanine and the locker, I mean, the uh, weight room up there, mm -hmm. and remembering all the, from our 97 state championship basketball team going down. I think they beat Monroe down uh, in the sta uh, state championship game that year. Wow. But just watching them go 32-0 and, and just knowing that not only were they the best team in the state, but they were the best team in the country that year as well. Wow. Yeah. In the country. That's it. Yeah, I hear that. That's it. Stone Mountain history. Yeah. I see that light still make that buzzing noise too. <laughs> <laughs> Many Back years then, later. I can come over here and dunk. I don't know if I can do it now. I'm not going to try it on tape. Yeah. <laughs> you still got it. You yeah, still got yeah, it. But we ain't yeah. got to show everything. No, no. We ain't got to show everything. <laughs> I, I, we, we missed the part where I jumped from the free throw line, but we'll just leave it on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Appreciate yeah. it, Doc. No problem. No problem. Another uh, great memory we had is we had something called uh, lift a -thon, And that's where we went out into the community and we gained pledges. Uh, to uh, sponsor us, maybe a dollar a pound, 50 cent a pound, 
And then we had a liftoff in the gym where they brought the weights down. Wow. Brought the mats down. We pulled out this side of the bleachers. And uh, everybody wanted to be the best. And so uh, coming in, you left in front of family, friends. I mean, it was a big crowd. So, you know, you down here doing your, we did our hang cleans right here, bench press over there, and we did our squats up top. Now, I remember big Josh Boswell, uh, he ended up being the top lifter. And uh, I think I came in second, but I was fighting to try to top Boz. And just that sharpening right there, that's where it started. Mm -hmm. And then we took that same iron sharpens iron and took it down to, uh, down to the field to compete down there to be the best. You know, so uh, just that's another memory, you know, coming in. And uh, early morning work, you know, I think we would, school started at 8 o'clock. We would get here about 6.30, mm. and we would lift and run on the inside, and then we go up, get cleaned up, and go to class. And that, that's another thing that built that camaraderie or having training camp where you spent the night here in the building, you know, you pull the bleachers out, guys sleeping all on the floor. It's funny, you know, comedians and different things. Yeah. But we all went down there, and that's back when you can practice three times a day and you was hitting for real. I think now they done kind of changed the rules yeah. and everything. You can only practice one time. But, uh, uh, yeah, these, these are all great memories, you know, coming into this gym and uh, seeing all of this stuff. Even the basketball team going against Rita Ann. You know, I hated rivals from across. Oh, the town. so that's an old rivalry. Yeah, old rival. And I just remember we, the football team, we would always sit on the visitors' side, and the uh, Redan football team came in, and I think they beat us in basketball. And so it was like a minute left to go in the game, and I came up with the idea to walk upstairs and go grab that football. And I walked down with the football in my jacket, and I sat right in the middle. And right when they started talking, I pulled that football up and let them know. We run this town. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It right. continues. Yep, yep, yep. Yes, yeah. yes. Yep, yep. So this is, uh, this is nice. This is nice. Man. Yep. Welcome home again, man. Yeah, I can't say it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for opening the doors for me. It means a lot. <clears throat> you know, at my college alma mater, they're doing the same thing, reaching back to the alumni. And it really means a whole lot. Um, all the alumni, we talk about our great memories at Stone Mountain, but just to have a principal and administration and guys like yourself, Mr. Wright Group, to reach back out to the, to the alumni, really, it really feels good. And we want to do whatever is necessary to make these guys successful and girls wow. successful. Thank you. The doors are open, man. Thank you, sir. We here. I mean, these <clears throat> videos and stuff are going to make a huge difference because the students need to hear from you, see you. As we walk through the building, you're pointing out different things. It'll make them look at things a right. different way because it'll come to life now because mm -hmm. there's a story behind it. There's right. a meaning behind it. We know you guys were here, but to know like the information you just shared, mm -hmm. you know, the rivalries, you know, right, the lift right. the thon the powder puff, pep rally, mm -hmm. leave the pep rally, go down to the field and get it on. And get the win. Yes. 97. The, oh, Class man. 90, and, you know, I'm biased, but that doesn't mean it's not true. <laughs> Class of 97, when we came through, I think our motto was we, we, we set the tone. I, I forgot what our motto was, but... Class of 97 is the best class that came through Stone uh -oh. Mountain. Y'all know, that. know that's true. You heard that. You heard it. Y'all know that's true. So y'all fighting for second place. Oh. Second place. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Thank oh, no you. No problem. My, uh, I think it was my sophomore year, I had to take health class. And uh, Coach McNeil was my teacher, and I sat right here. And so just coming up here, getting memories, raising my hand, you know. Um, and so this, this, is, this is nice. So just going back down memory lane, just sitting in my old, I don't know if it's my old desk, but this, right. this is the exact spot where I sat at, so. Amazing. Yeah. This is the in-school suspension room now. Oh, but I need to get out of here. No, no, we ain't going <laughs> to stay here yeah. long. I just want you to have a quick memory yeah. there. Right here, we got the Iron Pirates. You know, Coach uh, Fligg started that. And uh, after we finished Liftathon, they put the top names up here on the board. And I just remember Josh Boswell was number one. I was number two. I don't remember three, four, five, and six. I just remember Boswell beating me. And uh, I just took a picture of it. I'm getting ready to send it to Boswell right now. But uh, this is where it was made right here. You go back to some of the great teams in the 90s, mm -hmm. um, the 80s. They built themselves here in the weight room, and they took pride in coming in and lifting. And this is really, to be honest, what got me ready for college because we had a college-like Coach Fligg, 
um, Coach Harris, they really ran the program like a college. So when I got to college and I saw how my stats was up there with the starters, I felt good. I said, man, I can go play as a freshman. But the cycle and the way we ran the program, once I got to Clemson, the way Coach Batson runs the program, it was very similar to what I had in high school, and it just prepared me for that. The way practice was ran, uh, we ran it with periods, and it was fast-paced. And if you didn't do well, they start the period over, just like college, or they're going to drag that period out. Um, those are the things that really got me ready for college and ultimately the NFL. Wow. Yeah. I might see if I can throw 225 on there for old times. Uh oh, I old times. Time time no <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yes, you can. Yes, yes you can. can. Let's see. Let me pause. I'll be back. We're going to help <laughs> get this out. Old school still got it, baby. You see it. Yes, sir. Yep. Wow! <laughs> what kind of memories is that, man? Man, just hearing them weights right there, shake like that. Mm -hmm. That's back when you get to about eight, Boswell will come on your side and slap you on your side and make you get about ten more. So, <laughs> yeah, but it's feel good. Turned 41 today, so you know. Happy birthday. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate Happy it. birthday. How huge is that? Yeah. He came back to the rock for his birthday. <laughs> Left yeah. all the way in South Carolina to come here, delivered them posters. Oh, that man, the tour. We at least had to go through the building. Yeah, I remember uh, the coaches spray painted that to let you know it's the same way how they do it in college. But they had the spray paint on there, and it was big. You had to put your weights up. That's why I'm over here putting it up now. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> yep, you had to put your weights up. So. Make sure I follow through, do what I'm supposed to do. Man, yeah. years later, the story continues. So this is what tradition is about, y'all. Legacies are built on this right here. And this ain't something about what we thought about or what we think. He's showing you, telling you, lived here, walked through here. And what did he just do? He put his own weights right back up That's again. It. Put it up. You better not let Coach catch you walking away from that thing. And you didn't put that stuff up because he, Coach Fleeg and Coach Harris, they talked about the small things, you know, the details. A lot of times you, you focus on big plays, mm -hmm. but you win and lose games on the small details. And so by me focusing on those small things, that ultimately helped me to go play as a true freshman in college. Wow. You know, it ultimately helped me to get drafted and go play in the pros, focusing on the small details. And ultimately, it helps, me, it helps me in my career now, you know, focusing on the real small details and doing those, those small details to the best of my ability every day. Let me put this bar back. <laughs> the coach hit me up saying, you didn't put that back. You see, I was watching you. Yeah. you. You forgot the bar. Got yeah. it all back. Got yeah, put it all back. Yeah. We had a towel. We had the white bench. Y'all look, let me get this. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Wow. Now we're going to the next one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is nice. Yep, this is uh, one of the classrooms I sat in and uh, my freshman year. Um, I sat right here because I wanted to look around and look out the window and see who was going by. And so as I was sitting right here, one of my memories is I heard a loud, almost like a police knock on, the, on this glass right here. And I turned around, it was Coach McNeil, and he pointed to the front of the class. And it was from that day forward, he just reminded me that as a football player, we set the tone for the school, uh, we set the tone for the community, but our job is we sit in the front of the classroom. He said the information gets weaker as it travels to the back of the classroom. Wow. So you need to be sitting right here next to the teacher. And so it's from that day forward, even to this day in grad school, and I start my doctoral program in the fall, I'll be sitting in the front row just like this. So wherever I go, whether it's you know, professional development, uh, whatever, uh, I try to sit in that front row. If I can't sit in the front row, then I'm gonna be in the second row. But if I'm getting in the third row, then it's my fault because I was late. So mm. um, I, I, I make it my mission. The importance of academics, um, you know, this is, I don't have it with me, but I caused the fumble in the NFL and they give you a, a, a ball to kind of commem uh, commemorate that. And one of the things when I go out to the schools and I talk about that, 
I bring my degree from Clemson. And so I showed him my degree, and as it sits in the portfolio, it looks brand new to this day. And then I show that football. Something happened to that football and all the air went out. But the air is going to go out in that football long before you're going to uh, lose that academics. So that's why academics is very important. Um, we used to talk as a team, you're not a football player. Football is not who defines you. Football is going to leave you a lot sooner than academics. And I'm a testament to it. Uh, coming up, whether it was at Hambrick, or Stone Mountain too, or here at Stone Mountain High School, um, all of the teachers, my counselors, Miss Jordan, um, they all talked about having a plan B. And of course, you don't think that that's going to happen. You, you think you're going to make it, play for 10, 15 years, and you, you know everything is going to work out. But in my second year in the NFL, I ended up tearing my knee up. Uh, they went back in, uh, did a surgery, um, and when I came out, it tore up right again. And so when they went in the second time and they did the surgery, the doctor told me, you have a decision. You can continue to play, but you're probably going to be walking on the cane by the time you turn 30 years old. Wow. Um, at the time, I was about 25 years old. You think you're going to live forever. But then I said, well, give me, I needed a day to think about it. And I prayed on it. And I thought about uh, my future kids. And I have a daughter right now. And I couldn't see myself walking on the cane. I envisioned myself out there playing with my daughter. Uh, you know, running around, still hooping. At 41, I can still get out there and got a mean jump shot. But uh, that was important to me. So all of my teachers popped right back in my head and talked about that plan B. And my plan B was to get back at Clemson, finish my degree strong, uh, and then fall back on my education. And that's what I did. I've been doing that ever since. Um, I ended up being teacher of the year. I'm getting ready to, this is my last year in the classroom. I'll be an administrator next year, so I'm looking forward to doing some great things. But all of that came about because I focused really hard on my academics. One of the things I was very proud of, not only was I an All-American coming out of high school, but I actually graduated with a 317 GPA, and I had the Hope Scholarship. Wow. Um, and so I could have went either way, um, but that was because of my parents. You know, I think we had a rule, you had to pass five out of six classes. Well, in my house, I had to pass six out of six and a, a, a D was considered failing. And so we couldn't go below a C um, in our house. So my dad talks about that today um, all the time. If you talk to him, he's gonna tell you about that. But um, I take academics very seriously, and that's something that I, try, I pass down. My daughter's 10 years old now, and I'm very serious about academics. And I'm so proud, yesterday, the day before my birthday, she got her Duke tip acceptance, acceptance letter. Now she asked me, was I ever Duke Tip? And I told her no, but I beat Duke every time we played him in football. So. <laughs> but, uh, you know, guys, if, I, if you don't remember nothing that I said, it's star perception is reality. And so when I went to Clemson, I took it to my mission to sit in that front row and communicate with my professors early and often because I didn't want it to be when I got to the end of the semester. Now that's when the flood of students is coming in trying to talk to the uh, professors, they knew me by name because I made it my mission. Whether it was an auditorium with 800 people in there, they knew me by name and it wasn't because I played football, it was because I made it my mission to speak to them at least once a week to talk about what we were going over, talk, even if I understood it. I just wanted to talk to them and let them get to know my face. So if it came close to the end and I came to him at the end, he couldn't say you didn't never come, you had your chance. And that's what he told the other students. But I didn't want to leave it up for chance. Just like on football, I don't leave it up for the refs. I'm going to separate that receiver from the ball. I'm going to make sure I score that touchdown. I'm going to make sure I'm going to score a touchdown in the classroom. And I'm not going to leave it up for chance. I'm going to leave it all in the classroom just like I left it all out on the field. Thank you so, so much, man. No Happy birthday again, and I thank you. It. Appreciate it. Go Pirates. Yep, go Pirates. I'm a pirate for life. That's pirate true. for life, so. Yep, I just, you know, one of the games, I remember going to New England, and we were getting ready to play the, play the Patriots in the snow. And uh, I remember the NFL, they got the, the, uh, the dress code. We call them the dress code police. They come around and talk to you about your socks and, your, and the different things. Well, they said that they were going to find me because you could see pirates. I had my pirate shirt on up under my pads, and they could see it. Well, I told myself I wasn't going to take it off because I'm a pirate for life. I just tucked it in and went out there and played in it. That's how much that tradition means to me, wow. to be a pirate. I took it all the way to, uh, with me to the NFL. So 
Now I need to get me a pirate shirt now. Y'all got it? Oh yeah, we gotta get you a shirt. <laughs> yeah, ASAP. A Coach, shirt, so. you hear that? <laughs> Dr. John, you hear that? Yeah, we gotta yeah. get this man a shirt. Yeah, please do. We please got do. you, Doc. We got you. Yeah, I'm in South Carolina. I tell them the best brand of football. We were in seven quad A down here, but Georgia, that's where it's at. That's where I cut my teeth at. And right now, this is the best school going right here, Stone Mountain High School. Thank you again. <laughs> yeah, passing, uh, looking at the auditorium. When we had our Saturday games, we used to have to meet in there, and it, and it was a hard time. You know, Coach McNeil would be sitting at the door, he had his clipboard, and he would check off who was there. And so I just remember I stayed down the street in Cotswold Village. I don't even know if it's the same name, but we stayed down the street in Cotswold Village. You know, you that's five minutes down the road. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there watching something, lost track of time. I'm speeding down the road get outside, I think I barely put the car in park and sprinted from that front door all the way back in here and barely made it. I mean, you know, but those are the things even now, you know, my dad used to tell me, but high school reinforces that. Coach McNeil said, if, you, if you're on time, you're late. He wow. said, you always be there 15 minutes early. And I'm always 15 minutes early. I'm a stickler for time, for times just like that, being held accountable at the door. And it was real, if you were late, you didn't play in the first quarter. Wow. If you were really late, you just didn't play at all. And it didn't matter if you was a starter all the way down to first day on the team. If you were late, you didn't play. So, uh, you know, making sure that as a team leader, I wanted to lead by example. I ran probably a 4-2-40 from the parking lot all the way in here and to make sure I was on time. But uh, now that's important. Just remember it. As we walk out the building, some of these things, and mm. you know, even uh, – Back then, we had an assistant principal named Mr. Perry, you know, him taking me up under his wing. And that's one of the reasons why I want to be a principal today. He actually took me out of class for a day and let me shadow him. And I dressed up. I had a suit on. Wow. You know, I'm walking around, you know, with him. And he showed me what an, uh, a principal does. I said, man, this, this is what I want to do. Mm. And so, you know, I went and I majored in elementary education at Clemson. I'm getting my master's at Wingate, and I'm going to get my doctorate from Wingate but I'll be an administrator next year. Thank you, Dr. Perry. Um, but uh, these are some of the memories that you you really get, you know, from high school. Just cafeteria coming in to eat lunch. You know, we had the baked potato line. Thank you to the ladies in the baked potato line. They used to let me get the extra meat and hide it up under the potatoes. And they used to trip on everybody else, but they used to let me get the extra meat. But uh, our pregame meals, eating it in here as a family, as a team. Um, I remember I committed to Clemson over there by that door. Matt Bailey was standing over here, and I sprinted across, had my Clemson jersey, showed it to him, and we went up there, and we were roommates up at Clemson. So uh, a lot of memories in here. The longer I sit here, it's just going to continue to come to me. But, you know, that's where the football players used to sit, right over in here when you come in in the morning and just, you know, remembering the senior table as a freshman mm -hmm. and me making a mistake and sitting over there. And, you know, Roman Hill giving me the rope saying, man, you can't sit over here, even if you play football. You know, but just that tradition, you know, uh, having to pay your dues. Mm. You know, nowadays guys want things instant. They want it, you know, it's a microwave. And if they don't get it in the instant, they're not playing right away. It's not a situation that's working out for them. They quit or they leave. Um, just coming in and having to earn that respect and earn that playing time, it means a lot to me today, and it's helping me out to the, uh, today. So. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Pirates for life. <laughs>